Welcome. My name is Mr. Tommy Knitter. And I am Mr. Dustin Wetton. Well, we are here. We are together. We are in one room. Some of us are virtual, but more than less, we are here to celebrate the graduating class of 2022. I couldn't be more excited to join you guys today, and I want to thank the graduates of 2022 for having me be a part of today's ceremony. Uh, before we begin, as we begin with our ceremony today, we're going to ask parents, please be respectful of the aisles as students walk in during the processional. Please don't block the aisles, and please do not try and take pictures as it makes it difficult for our graduates to enter. A couple of housekeeping items before we begin. If you need to use washrooms, the exits are going to be through those main doors that you came in through. If you go past the Jugo Juice, there's a set of washrooms there. Those ones are closer, but if you also need a washroom, you can go to the left, down the hallway, and there will be washrooms there as well, although they are further than the ones from the Jugo, Jugo Juice. If there is any type of emergency, we do have exits through the doors in which you came. There's doors off to the left, and then there's doors off to the right that we would use in the case of an emergency. All right. What an amazing group of students we're here to celebrate today. A group that has overcome challenges and persevered for their last four years. I could not be more honored to introduce our graduates of 2022, please stand and rise for the processional.
you may be you may be seated. Welcome to the graduating class of 2022. Now to do our land acknowledgement, I'd like to invite up to the stage Shana Angle. In the spirit of respect and reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksiga, the Bigani, and the Gaina First Nations, the Sutina First Nation, and the Iyahe Nakoda First Nation, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. We acknowledge that this territory is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. We acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for generations. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. We are grateful to all nations who steward and celebrate this territory. We are honored to live and learn on this land. Can we please stand for our national anthem and the marching of the flag? And remove your caps. Thank you to Constable Nathan Moore, Grade 12 students Sydney Alcock and Keelan Thrillgood who sang our O Canada today. We would now like to introduce the Honorable Blake Richards, Member of Parliament for a virtual congratulations. Greetings graduates. When it comes to success, NFL player JJ Watt put it best when he said, Success isn't owned, it's leased, and the rent is due every single day. 
Anything that you want to achieve in life will take hard work, sacrifice, and dedication. And success wouldn't truly be as sweet without the knowledge that it took some blood, sweat, and tears to get there. Because if it was easy, it wouldn't truly be an accomplishment. Now, being here today is one of those accomplishments. There was undoubtedly some of that blood, some of that sweat, and some of that tears that went into getting here today. It surely took hard work, sacrifice, and dedication to achieve this goal of a high school diploma. And so congratulations, graduates, on the first of many accomplishments that you'll have in life. I wished I could have been there in person with you today. However, I just wish to offer you one piece of advice. When it comes to anything in life, put the value of doing the right thing ahead of doing the thing right. If there's one quality in life that will make you stand out above all, it's integrity. When we act with integrity, we build trust. It means doing what you say that you're going to do. It means showing up when you say you're going to show up. And it means not over-promising and under-delivering. It definitely means acting the same in private as you do in public. And telling the truth, keeping your promises, and doing the right thing even when you think that no one's watching. Integrity is what it takes to stand out and be great in any community, in any relationship, and in any career. The leaders of tomorrow will be those who act with integrity. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are into country music, because I know I certainly wasn't when I was in high school, but I think some of the greatest lessons in life can be learned from a good country song. So let me read to you some of my favorite lyrics from one of those songs, I Hope You Dance. I hope you never fear those mountains in the distance, never settle for the path of least resistance. Living might mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. When you come close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance. And when you get the chance to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you dance. So class of 2022, I hope you never choose to sit it out, to sit on the sidelines of life. I pray that you always choose to dance the dance. Those who jump in and do it and do it with integrity, those are the few, the few who are truly successful in life. Remember, there are two types of people, those who say it can't be done and those who just did it. So go out there, find out what your it is, and then just do it. And no matter how hard it gets or how rocky it gets, keep at it. Congratulations, class of 2022, on a job well done, and I wish you all the best in your future. Thank you, MP Blake Richards. I'd like to now welcome up to the stage RVS trustee and board chair, Mrs. Fiona Gilbert. Good morning, everyone. It is absolutely fantastic to be here with all of you, here in person, face to face, and share in this space, and feel the excitement and the energy in the room. And I think it's awesome, too, that this event is being live streamed, and so that our, all of our loved ones, far and near, can join in our celebration here today. We have so much to be grateful for. Just a few short months ago, we didn't know if an event like this was going to be able to be possible. And through blood, sweat, and tears, I'm really hoping there actually wasn't a lot of blood, but really the sheer, the sheer commitment and dedication of a committed team at Cochrane High School with the staff, a student grad committee, and a parent grad committee, here we are, celebrating all together here today. First this morning, here with this convocation graduation ceremony, and then later this evening with a graduation banquet. As the saying goes, it takes a village, and what an awesome village we have here. Thank you to all of you who had a hand in making today happen for our graduates, for, our, for the Cochrane High School staff, and for families. So graduates, here you are. 
I can only imagine what you might be feeling here this morning. I imagine that you might be feeling a little bit of joy. Hopefully. Let's hear it. Is there a little bit of joy? No? None? I think you can have it. I think you do. In amongst that joy, I bet you also feel a little bit of sadness. Probably some excitement. And maybe even a little bit of fear. I really do hope that there's some pride. And I imagine that perhaps there's a little bit of anxiousness as well. These are all okay things to be feeling. There's some of you here who might not even believe that this day is actually finally here. And some of you, I can only imagine, might be feeling that you didn't actually think that you would make it here. But you did. You made it. And I believe that part of the reason that you made it here today can be found sitting behind you and all around you. Take a look. Take a minute to look behind you. Look at all of those people that are here gathered today. These are the people who have given you support and encouragement over the years. And they are here today to honor and to celebrate you and your achievement. Another part of the reason, I believe, can be found sitting over there. They're kind of over there in that group. And these are the people that's teachers and staff of Cochrane High School. Yeah. Their commitment to you, your learning, and your success is second to none. A third part of the reason I think that you made it is sitting amongst you, your classmates and your friends who have been on this ride with you, experiencing the ups and the downs and the ins and the outs and the back up again. Some of these friends and classmates have been with you since the first day of kindergarten. And I did some quick math. That's approximately 4,657 days ago. How awesome is that? Your first day of kindergarten. Another part of the reason that I believe that you are here today is because of you. Yes, you. You are the ones who did it. Yeah, your parents, they prodded and encouraged along the way. They might have pulled you out of bed on a couple of occasions to get you to school, but they, not, they were not the ones going to school, navigating the hallways, sitting through the, cla sitting through the classes, both online and in person, getting the assignments done and the exams written. And yeah, those staff over there, they helped too. They nudged and reminded you, and likely many, many times over, to get the work done. But it wasn't them. It wasn't them who did writing the essays and handing in the work. It was you. You did this. So in all of those feelings that you might be feeling today, feel proud of your accomplishment. And I do hope that with the busyness and excitement that you're feeling today and in the days and weeks to come, that you take a moment to pause. Take a moment to pause and reflect on the accomplishment and all of the feelings that you are feeling and remember to give thanks to those who helped you along the way. On behalf of the Rocky Schools, on behalf of the Rocky View Schools Board of Trustees, all the best for continued success in the next steps of your journey wherever they may take you. So family, friends, staff and guests, please join me in congratulating the Cobra class of 2022. Thank you, Trustee Gilbert. Up next, we are going to welcome a virtual greeting from Cochrane Mayor Jeff Janum. Ladies and gentlemen, teachers, parents, special guests, and especially all of you, honored graduates of Cochrane High Class of 2022. It is my great pleasure to say a few words on this very special occasion Cobra grad. Now, as an alumni of Cochrane High myself, I am especially honored to share a few words with you today. With all the COVID restrictions behind us, isn't it great to finally celebrate a grad the way they were meant to be in person? Well, most of us are, you are, 
Um, there's two reasons why I'm not with you today, and please uh, thank you all for bearing with me through this virtual presentation. I was so done with Zoom meetings and uh, the virtual world for two years, but uh, as the world is getting back to normal, I have uh, travel plans that have taken me out of town, and I'm unable to be in person at your grad today. So that's the first reason I'm coming to you virtually. The second is I just love grad. Um, like I said, as a graduate of Cochrane High myself, I loved grad. Um, as a parent of two kids who have gone through Cochrane High and graduated, I love that. And I have loved speaking at every single grad since I've become mayor. So again, thank you for you know, allowing me this uh, virtual opportunity. So I'll get, I'll get on with it. And as you bid farewell to high school and embark on the next chapter of your life, I'd like you to consider this. What transition is life in life is bigger than this one? Graduating from college or university maybe, uh, marriage, birth of a child, all of these events are big for sure, but uh, today is likely your first really big deal. So thank you for allowing me to share these thoughts today on this big deal day, and hopefully I'm the only one, like I said, giving a virtual speech. But here's a few takeaways that have helped me in my life and hopefully they will help you and yours as you make this transition. First, and uh, I'm sorry to have to be the one to share this with you and break these, this news to you, but the easy part of your life is now over. Yep, when you receive that diploma today and walk across that stage, the transition begins between being the one cared for and the one doing the caring. Between being someone's responsibility and being the one responsible. And if that sounds scary, that's because it is. But most things that are in life that are, mo that are worth doing, most worthwhile, are scary. And it's not all doom and gloom, don't worry about it. The exciting part is your real work, your work, your life's work begins today. And that's exciting. You're in charge now, it's on you. So go for it. Second, and this is gonna sound cliche, but be positive. And it's something that I work very hard to maintain in all aspects of my life. And as mayor, trust me, I often feel overwhelmed with expectations from our community, issues, social media. Yeah, it uh, can get a bit much at times, but I control how I feel and how I react. And so can you. We've talked now about the easy part of your life being over. Uh, and you are now also responsible for your outlook. So, if you can muster the self-discipline to always, no matter what, look for the good in life in any situation, you will find the quality of your life infinitely better. Number three, your health. Take care of that vessel that will carry you through this positive new life of yours, your body. For me, it's been triathlon. Uh, it's where I go to clear my head, think of my craziest ideas, dream my goals, or simply go for a run, blow off some steam, or go walk the dog. It has inspired me to imagine my limits, to set my set sights higher, to go farther than I ever have before. It has been a statement of excellence, passion, and commitment. It has tested my physical toughness and mental strength. It has taught me about persevering, enduring, and being a part of something larger than myself. It has shown me the heights that can be achieved when I push myself beyond my boundaries. And all this just while trying to stay in shape and take care of my body. Now, I'm not here to try and convince you to sign up for a race, unless you want to. All I'm saying is stay healthy. Play, play a sport, do yoga, pump iron, run, whatever, but take care of your body. You're gonna need it. Number four. I want you to think about leaving a legacy. Ask yourself, what will you do to change the world? Volunteer maybe, get involved in your community. Don't take any of it for granted. You're only on this planet for a limited number of days, so cherish each and every one of them. Don't wait for tomorrow. Your opportunity is now, chase it. Lastly, I, told, I, I thought I said this was a short list, so lastly, Cochrane continues to be one of the fastest growing communities in all of Canada. People want to move here. That's no secret. And a major motivating factor that compelled me to become mayor 
was that I wanted to inspire and be part of the movement that it continues to make Cochrane the place where people are proud to come from and want to call their home. Look hard at where you came from and resist the urge to fall into the grass is always greener trap. By all means, travel, explore, and grow. Change the first letter in your postal code, maybe. But while you do these things, consider seriously what it means to have a hometown. What it means to come from Cochrane. When I graduated in 1986, most of us couldn't wait to leave town. Many of my classmates felt that in order to achieve their dreams and aspirations, they had to leave. But that's no longer the case. Now, Cochrane has evolved into a world-class community with a diverse economy and a quality of life envied around the world. Your parents have made Cochrane your hometown. Consider making it your own someday. As I look out from the virtual podium today, I'm sure I'm not looking at just Canada and the world's future, I'm looking at Cochrane's. Finally, on behalf of all of us on Council and from the citizens of your hometown, Congratulations on today's achievement. Way to go, Cobra grads. Thank you, Mayor Janung. I'd now like to welcome to the stage Associate Superintendent of Learning, Miss Lori Meyer. Well, good morning, and grads, I know you don't have a list of what's happening here today in front of you, but I'll tell you we're about halfway through the list, so we're, we're getting there. Uh, good morning, Cochrane High grads, parents, staff, and dignitaries. On behalf of our superintendent, Greg Luterbach, and the rest of the Education Centre staff, I'm honoured to have a few minutes to express my excitement about the end of your high school era. So your grad theme of Written in the Stars, um, it implies what happens to us is directed by a force that may be out of our control. This concept of fate or destiny or karma uh, can be approached with curiosity and wonder. And those are skills that I hope that you haven't lost over your years of school and that you continue to employ in your lives going forward. But let's consider this for a moment. Is it fate that, you, that had you end up here this morning? in this room with all of these people that love and support you, your friends, your family, and your teachers. I suggest that you got here with hard work, tenacity, perseverance, and continual encouragement from your supporters. Well, there may be aspects of fate that played a role, uh, perhaps waking up only because the dog barked, you forgot to set your alarm, uh, or you found that magical parking spot right in front of the school as you were about to be late. Essentially, grads, you did this. You did this. You got yourself here tonight with your own brain power and the support of all those people we mentioned who love you. Now, I don't dispute that fate or karma or destiny occur or exist. I have experienced them myself and at times give them credit for certain circumstances. Always with wonder and curiosity, as to who or what is directing my path. In the end, though, I come back to me and my own power as the primary director of my life. I hope that in finding your path written in the stars that you don't give away your power. You have that power. Maintain it. You have the power to be and do and achieve whatever it is you set your mind to. You've demonstrated that already. You've risen above so many challenges and obstacles You've built skills and resilience that you will need to carry you forward as you leave your high school experience behind. Don't forget what you've done under your own power. Of course, with the generous love of family, friends, and teachers. You've made it, class of 2022, all the best. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. Up next, I would like to welcome Mr. Jeff Chalmers, principal of Cochrane High School.
Good morning, everyone. This is my favorite day of the school year, so I just want to say that. Students, I feel very fortunate to be able to address you all today and to have had the opportunity to work with you over just the last few months at Cochrane High. Not only did you have to endure the pandemic, but you've broken three principles this year. You, en <laughs> you endured the parking wars of 2022, and let's not forget the last month of construction on 4th Avenue that took an hour just to get down the hill. I know that it's customary to have the principal of the school address the grads, and I'm grateful to have a captive audience one more time with parental support behind me and literally behind you, so you have to listen attentively. I also know that I have not had the same opportunities as our teaching staff to interact with you and get to really know you at the school. Although I did get a sense of your enthusiasm and school spirit when you looked also amazing dressed in hot pink at the pep rally on Wednesday, and Evan, next time I suggest instead of youth 10, go to 6X, that tank top was just a little too big for you. You see, there's a bit of a challenge in our profession in that as you quote, progress in your career, the interaction with students actually diminishes more and more. I know that my colleagues would agree that it's really the energy, laughter, relationships, and the future potential we see in all of you as students on a daily basis that is the true motivation for what we do every single day. And I'm also keenly aware that, <clears throat> excuse me, while you are at this moment a captive audience, people didn't come here to hear me wax philosophical. They came to celebrate your accomplishment of completing high school and moving on to your next adventure, watch you walk across the stage and receive that all important piece of paper and the recognition that comes with it. So I'll ask you to indulge me just a few minutes and listen to one simple notion that I hope you will consider as you move on from the relative safety and security that you have enjoyed at Cochrane High School and pursue your next grand adventure. I heard a saying recently that I think is quite apropos, and here it is. It says, if you can't embrace change, at least hug it for a little while. I have a good friend that said people don't typically change out of choice, but rather it almost always surprises us and forces us to re-examine our circumstances and perhaps come to a new understanding. Change in life continues to come at us faster and more frequently to the point where it seems as though life is always in flux. And certainly the last two years have proved that to be true. It seems to me that there are a couple of different types of people reflected in that quote. First, there are those hard charging, fast paced, devil may care folks who embrace change and in fact thrive on it. And there, there are others who prefer the staid and true they thrive on the security and the predictability. What I'd encourage you to do as you head into the fall and go to university or college, start your new job or take a gap year and make it up as you go, is to hug change for just a little while. If you are that hard charger, hug the change to slow down and notice things. I've been amazed during my time at the school with just how driven so many of you are, and I admire your determination, your vision, and your dedication. So for those of you who would characterize yourself as the hard-charging type A personalities, I encourage you to take a breath, take a pause, close the books for just a little while and notice the little things in life that are always around us and that often pass us by. Make sure that you connect with your loved ones and your friends. It's the relationships we surround ourselves with that most often define who we become and determine our success. I know that to be true and I would not be where I am today without the support guidance, advice, and mentorship from some very key individuals, not the least of whom are my own parents. For you more staid and true folks, I encourage you to hug the change by stepping outside your comfort zone. It is often daunting to step away from the sure thing and take that chance, try something new. Mary Tyler Moore once said, take chances, make mistakes. Oh, sorry. She said, take chances, make mistakes. That's how you grow. Pain nourishes your courage. You have to fail in order to practice being brave. I'm the parent of two boys, age 20 and 24, and I have to tell you that it is really difficult as a parent, and a teacher for that matter, to stand back and let you, our kids, encounter challenges and difficulty, for we have been taught that our job is to protect and prevent those failures. But it's really in those frightening moments of uncertainty where we discover ourselves and grow. You see, as Dennis Whiteley says, failure should be our teacher, not our undertaker. Failure is delay, not defeat. It is a temporary detour, not a dead end. 
Failure is something that we can avoid only by saying nothing, doing nothing, being nothing. So I encourage you to be a young person of action and dare to be bold in the pursuit of your successes. You may not realize it right now, but you have had the very good fortune of attending school in one of the best educational systems in the world and have attended one of the very best schools in that system. Our work as educators has taken you only so far. It was your dedication, your determination and hard work that has carried you over the finish line. And some of you have had to be more dedicated, determined and hardworking than your peers. But that doesn't matter because you have all seen success in your own way and it's evidenced by the fact that you are sitting here today. You have demonstrated the pillars of the three C's, community, character and commitment. So now, as you come to the end of your formal secondary education, I wish you all the best. Embrace the change, or at least hug it for a little while, and know that if the times arise when you seem unsure, that you can always come home for a real hug, which I'm sure mom and dad, and even some of your teachers will be more than happy to offer. Congratulations on your day, and be safe. Thank you, Mr. Chalmers. I would now like to invite Miss Bennett and Miss Hodgson to the stage for our tribute to the graduates. Good morning, everyone. It is a real honor for Mrs. Hodgson and myself to offer our congratulations on behalf of the teachers to this year's graduating class. Now before I begin my speech, and I'm sorry if I'm treading on some other people's speeches uh, when I do this, um, but I was moved so much by what happened here yesterday after school that I just feel compelled to say something here. Um, we have those three pillars, and two of them that are our hallmarks, I think, in my opinion, are community and commitment. And both of those lead to us having such great character. Those two pillars yesterday were on full display. We had grade 11 students in here helping transform uh, this space into this beautiful setting that you guys have before you. You had your grad committee who was shown up here. You had your parent committee. And those are two things here. We always love having our community uh, join us at the school and help us out. Um, it, this reminds me of 30 years ago, and Mr. McNabb would probably attest to this, where we used to have graduation at the school. We would be driving trucks back and forth across the football field to drag the chairs from Elizabeth Barrett and Manichab and across to get things set up. And I just think that we owe that grad committee and your parent committee such gratitude here for what they've done. So well done. Now, I digress there and I'm sorry, but I also, this ties nicely into the next part here. I, I think some of you in the audience will remember Mr. Vern Friesen, who was a teacher at Cochrane High School years ago. He also was a coach for Toastmasters, and he always gave me this advice when I was giving some speeches. He said, Stephanie, be short, be brief, be accurate, and then be seated. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I am going to be brief, no matter how long it takes me. <laughs> when I was thinking about making this speech, and I look back on the last four years, um, there was just one word that kept coming up, and that is the word unprecedented. Unprecedented is, is what you have all endured over the past four years. You barely got your feet wet in grade nine, and then COVID struck in grade 10, and it has remained in your midst for the rest of your years here at Cochrane High School. Your world as you knew it was flipped upside down. You had to figure out new ways of doing the basic of things. Like, how did you celebrate your birthday in a lockdown? How did you go grocery shopping? The basic of things. And then we had to do things that are more complicated, like learning online. 
And yet that's exactly what you did. Here you are on the cusp of graduating high school and ready to start the next phase in your life. Now this graduating class is going to go down in Cochrane High history as the class whose athletic teams made it to the most provincial championships. That's you guys. And here we are with track and field away at a provincial championship right now, who captured the most titles in performing arts. That's you guys. And who resurrected the most clubs that our school has ever offered. That's on you guys. You emerged from this unprecedented time with class and dignity and determination like no other graduating class before you. It is a beautiful signal of the state of our health in this educational system. My grandparents' generation has, been the, has the reputation of being the greatest reputation of all time. They were a little bit younger than you are right now when their lives were disrupted. They grew up during the dirty 30s some in poverty and despair. They left the graves of many of their friends on the foreign battlefields of World War II in the 1940s. And they emerged from all of that in the 50s and started the new economy with invention after invention. These would be your great grandparents. I bring that up because with the way in which you all have fought back with the way in which you have endured losses, with the way in which you have helped one another rise above these tough times, refusing to acquiesce to the cancel culture begs this question. Do you have the granular makings of becoming the next greatest generation? At Cochrane High, you have set new standards of achievement athletically, theatrically, and hopefully academically with the upcoming diplomas. <laughs> Whatever path you take next, and I know I speak on behalf of all of those wonderful people over there, these teach your teachers. Whatever path you take next, Your teachers hope it is one where you never stop reaching for more. More for yourself, more for your fellow citizen, more for your country and the world. And with that, I'd like to pass this mic over to Mrs. Hodgson, who is going to put a smile on your face with her poetic message. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bennett. I hope these words that I speak to you grads will serve a dual purpose. First, it takes me way out of my comfort zone to pay a tribute to you. And secondly, I'd like my, administrators, or I'd like my administrative staff to rethink my ELA grade nine assignment. <laughs> Here goes. It is said, greatness is written in the stars. After a global pandemic, what would the class of 2022 write upon theirs? That's Dr. Seuss. From grade nine to grade 12, we believed in these students. The class of 2022 are the stars that will champion life-changing movements. I'll start with Flory, Ben, Callum, and Beck, and I'll reminisce about their meme, Cobra Dendek. I'll move on to Alden, Evan, Liam, and Andrew, and lament about curling and its undervalue. They don't seem to care. They're proud and they're true. Those four boys were committed in all that they do. One of my favorite memories is from Social 20, 
It includes Carter, Owen, Quinn, Matthew, and Finley. Impressed was I with their COVID creation, a revolution, and crimes committed by various nations. They inspired their peers, guided each other through dark COVID years, managed lockdowns, and yet Ray, Zach, Owen, and Jaden remained high achievers and class clowns. On that, we can all bet. Whether life in the halls or cheers in the gym, Faith, Milan, Georgia, and Lexi were synonymous with the win. The humor of Janelle, Jenna, Taylor, and Bryn helped us all through the darkest of day. They worked hard, they played hard, they achieved and they endured. They performed online and they've made themselves heard. Blessed are we, their teachers. <clears throat> We've watched you all grow as you navigated COVID, Zoom, and your poetry portfolio. This group made us proud at volleyball, basketball, football, and soccer. The stars of 2022 joined everything with just the smallest of offer. Sieben honestly feels it's too soon for you to all go. She wants you to shine your light and of course, to share what you know. But Cassandra, Jacob, Bailey, Bryn, and Shay, how will she win her volleyball and track banners now that you've gone away? You've joined psychology, ultimate choir and PA. You've golfed and created leadership in your own unique way. Whether it was Charlotte, Sawyer, Bree, or Matthew, Halloween, hockey, or band, the class of 2022 was always there to lend a gracious helping hand. We know that you will shine your light no matter where you land. Your teachers will remember this group as anything but bland. Finally, in the words of Teddy Roosevelt, keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. Be bold, be courageous. Don't let yourselves down. Follow every opportunity that comes your way if you're motivated for the right reasons, it's okay if you stray. Stay true to your compass, follow your North Star, dare to be different and discover who you are. Believe in your talents, you're ready to chart your own path. What's written in the stars? Well, that depends on you. Grads of 2022, there's nothing you can't do. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bennett and Ms. Hodgson for your kind words for this graduating class. I'd now like to call up to a stage a tribute to the teacher, or sorry, giving a tribute to the teachers and parents, Jackie Chen and Taylor Kindleman. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jackie Chen. And my name is Taylor Kindleman. Both of us have been students at Cochrane High School for four years now, and have had the pleasure of learning from all of you one way or another. Today, we are here to celebrate a transition from ending to beginning, from the familiar to the unknown, from one challenge to the next. High school is full of all those challenges, beginnings and endings. And for some of us, it is the most daunting experience we will face. Do you remember walking in those doors on the first day of high school, way back in grade nine? It was terrifying. All those scary big kids, brand new rules, strict rules of the hallway. Despite that, we met some of the most remarkable individuals that day. Individuals who welcomed us to the Cochrane High community with open arms, warm smiles, and encouraging words. Those individuals were the teachers. Teachers are the most hardworking people we will ever meet, and they will never get nearly enough credit that they deserve. Thank you. 
When I think of all my teachers over the past few years, one word really comes to mind, and that word is impact. As defined uh, by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, impact is the force of impression of one thing on another, a significant or major effect. A student will spend over 1,300 hours at school every year, and multiplied by the four years, we would have been here for over 5,200 hours. So, next to an individual's parents, naturally, teachers would have the highest influence and impact on a child's life. They have taught us many things, such as how to argue effectively, how not to kill a puppy when factoring, as well as the classic, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> but all jokes aside, we've also learned about time management, presentation, organization, physical activity, physical activity, literary, and lab skills as well. The cornerstone of a student's success falls upon their teachers. And for everyone sitting in this room today, those teachers are you. You've all built the foundation of tomorrow's generation as committed characters striving to foster a successful community. The job of a teacher is often a thankless one, so join us in helping to change that. Not only would we like to give a big thank you to all of the teachers at our school, but we also want to recognize all the staff within our building who have worked tirelessly at Cochrane High over the past four years. So, thank you to all the educational assistants, custodians, administration, and all other staff who work tirelessly at Cochrane High. No matter where we end up in life, we'll always remember your unwavering efforts, the knowledge you've given us, and your aid in our pursuit to the, to the next chapters of our lives. You've helped us learn and grow in many ways, not just as students, but also as individuals. So thank you, Cochrane High teachers, for playing a significant part in our last four years here. We wish you the best for the remainder of your teaching careers. And on behalf of the class of 2022, thank you for putting your heart and soul into teaching us. You had faith in us, even when we probably did not deserve it. In more ways than you can ever imagine, you have changed our lives forever. So we ask that everyone to grab an imaginary glass and raise it and help us give a toast to our teachers. From all of us to all of you, we would not be here without you. You have our gratitude. Thank you and we hope to make you proud. All right, y'all, you're close. Just hang in there for a little bit. Uh, we have two of our keynote speakers now up. Uh, before I introduce our next keynote speaker, I just want to thank Jackie and Taylor. Uh, we appreciate you coming up here and taking the time to give a toast to your parents and teachers. Um, yes, give a round of applause. The next person that we're going to have up to speak is Bonnie Bend. Uh, Bonnie, I'm going to ask that you come to the stage so I can introduce you uh, with everyone seeing your lovely smile. Bonnie Bend is the founder and owner of Great Things in Store, a local consignment and toy shop. She is a Cochrane High alumnus who graduated in 1992 before moving to the University of Calgary to earn a Bachelor in Commerce in 1997. From there, Bonnie chose to travel the world before returning to Cochrane and starting her own business. With a newborn baby, this venture became even more interesting. Great Things in Store has become a staple in the town of Cochrane. Through Bonnie's love for Cochrane, her business is founded on fostering a sense of community. Bonnie, thank you for being here with us today to share a message with our graduates. Whoa, this is a lot of people. <laughs> um, Thank you so much for that introduction and congratulations to the class of 2022. It's an honor and a pleasure to be asked to deliver this speech today. 30 years ago, I sat where you sit right now, except like Ms. Bennett said, we were actually in the Cochrane High Gymnasium and this was just an empty field. Um, I was surrounded by some of your parents, I think. I see a few friendly faces. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> there's quite a few of you out there. I feel like I know most of this room, which is making that a, this a lot easier. Um, 
I honestly don't remember who gave the speeches that day 30 years ago or what they said, and I don't imagine you'll remember mine in 30 years either. But if today I can make you feel just a little bit more excited about what's to come in your life, then my job will be done. Your grad committee has asked me to speak about my own journey after high school and where life took me, some of the challenges I came up against, and to talk about some of the exciting things that you can all look forward to after high school, regardless of the path that you choose to take. So here is my message to you today. From this point forward, you get to write the story of your future. You and you alone are the author. The next chapter is going to be unlike anything you've experienced so far because you're now the boss. Don't worry, you'll have people in your life to guide you with valuable information and opinions, but at the end of the day, you get to make the decisions about what comes next. And no matter what anyone tells you, there's no right way to do things. Some of you will go on to post-secondary, some will pursue a trade, some will take a gap year or travel or spend time volunteering, some of you will get a job, move out, or maybe stay home just to figure out what comes next. These are all valid choices, and the best part is that you can change your mind and change your plan. Just like some of your high school teachers, life allows rewrites and do-overs. We'll talk about that a little more in a few minutes. You are heading into some of the best years of your life. Look around at your parents and teachers and grandparents. Most of us would love the chance to go back and live those years over again. I listened to a smart guy named Gary Vaynerchuk who talks about this window of time after high school and through your 20s as the time when you can and should take big risks in your life. This is the time to follow your heart and your intuition, shedding the weight of the expectations of others. I didn't really do that, at least in the beginning. After high school, I went straight into the business program at U of C, a program I chose because it seemed like a clear path to getting a stable job that paid well. Five years later, with a co-op degree in hand, finding a stable job that paid well was not what my heart desired. Those five years at U of C were amazing, with friendships made that I still cherish to this day, an overseas field study that took me to the Mediterranean, co-op jobs in three different cities, and lots of parties. But when it was all over, I knew I wasn't ready to get on the career path. So here's where I cashed in on one of those rewrites I was talking about earlier. I decided to take my gap year in reverse, and that gap year turned into several years. While friends were pursuing opportunities with big companies and buying condos and settling down, all I wanted to do was escape and see the world. So that's what I did. Over the next five or six years, I traveled through Europe with two friends in a year rail pass. I went to Japan, where a friend was from U of C was teaching English. Then continued on through Southeast Asia, where I took Thai cooking classes, explored islands, and went on treks. Then I got a working holiday visa. Do you know about working holiday visas? Canadian youth can get them for lots of countries. Mine was for Australia, where I worked at a ski hill and met some of the best people you could meet, some of whom became travel companions for trips to places like Tasmania and New Zealand. In between these adventures, I came back to Canada during our winters, where I worked at a backcountry heli ski lodge, which is another way I funded all of those trips. Each time I came home, my parents got pretty excited that it was now time to find that stable job that paid well buy that condo and start contributing to an RRSP. <laughs> and then they get a little upset when I told them I was heading off somewhere else. They weren't paying for my lifestyle, but it wasn't what they'd imagined for me. Circling back to how you are the author of your own story, I want you to know that you won't be able to please everyone with your decisions. You shouldn't try to. You are responsible for your happiness, not theirs. After coming home from my working holiday in Australia, I decided the time was right to start focusing on my career. The Heli Ski Company's parent company hired me to work in a management position that was a perfect fit for my skills. But after spending the summer in that job, 
I realized a couple of things. My wanderlust was still not cured, and I really wanted to learn to speak Spanish fluently. So what do you do when you find yourself in this position? You quit your job, take a teaching English as a foreign language course, and you head to Central America. I spent the next two years of my life teaching in two private schools in Guatemala, volunteering and traveling through that part of the world. This is where life went sideways for me, and while we don't have time for that story, which would also get very awkwardly personal, I want to at least acknowledge it for this reason. Life will go sideways for all of you at some point too. You're already living through one of the biggest disruptive events of a century, and there are going to be more things that don't go as planned. There are two pieces of advice I have about that. The first is that you are all more courageous than you know. Merriam-Webster defines courage as mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. As you venture into the next chapter of your life, at times it is going to be scary, call on courage. It will seem like everyone around you has it all together, but guess what? Don't believe their social media. They don't have it all together, and they also have fears. Call on courage to go after the life that you want. And the second piece of advice is that remember, you can always go for that rewrite. So back to me and my rewrites. As I was saying, life went sideways when I was far, far away from home. Funny thing though, my darkest time is what led to one of the best and courageous things that I've done. And that was to leave that bad situation, come back to Cochrane and start my own business at the age of 28. That business is now the exact same age as most of you. And while it hasn't always been an easy route, I can't imagine my life any other way. So that's the story of my 20s in a nutshell. Your story is gonna be different, but it will be full of adventures and mistakes and rewrites. I leave you with these words from Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do by the ones that you did. So throw off the bowlines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. Get out there and take some risks. It'll be worth it, I promise. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to invite Keelan Thorogood to present our keynote speaker with a gift. All right. Before we start, I just want to say a huge thank you to Bonnie. That was a very beautiful speech. If we could just give her one more big round of applause. Thank you again to Miss Bonnie Bend and Keelan Thorogood. Next, I would like to invite Mrs. Gordon Reese to introduce our 2022 valedictorian. Wow, this is a lot of people. Uh, I'm just going to lift this up a little bit. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Tommy and DJ. They're doing an awesome job. And and our graduates, well, you know I'm a crier. And uh, just my heart is bursting, and I'm so very proud. Uh, good morning, graduates, parents, guardians, families, colleagues, my wonderful colleagues, and esteemed guests. 
Um, my name's Lisa Gordon-Reese, and I'm a teacher at Cochrane High School, and it gives me the very biggest pleasure to introduce our Cochrane High School valedictorian of 2022, Ms. Keisha Bassey. Poor Keisha, she's going to be standing here for a minute. When Keisha asked me to introduce her at grad, it was an easy yes. I have known Keisha for four years at Cochrane High, and I have watched her grow into a kind, confident, amazing young woman. When I asked Keisha what she loved about Cochrane High, she said that she knows almost every single person in her graduating class. And some of her best high school memories are meeting new people, and of course, hanging out in the snake pit. Keisha embodies the three C's of Cochrane High. Community. Keisha volunteers with the Blood Drive team at CHS and the wonderful, amazing Steph Bennett and Jason Crawford, and donates her time at the YMCA in Rocky Ridge, tutoring other grade 11 students in physics. If only you could have been there when I took physics, Keisha. Character. Everything that Keisha does involves helping people and wanting to make a difference. This is real character. Someone who doesn't just talk the talk, she walks the walk. She is constantly pushing herself to be her best, and this positively affects the people around her. Commitment. I say the word Keisha, and I think of commitment. She's an organized, dedicated, hard worker. This is apparent because she was one of the members of your grad committee. And look how well this turned out. Your grad week will become a CHS tradition. When I asked Keisha some questions about her future and her beliefs, she said, life is short. Take the chance. Try to give your all in whatever you choose to do. Give 100%. Don't be afraid to try new things. Push yourself. A little about Keisha, she's been a dancer for 14 years, but when she hit high school, she decided to cut back on her dance lessons so she could focus on her studies and her extracurricular. She to chose to focus on tap, and she'll be giving a demonstration next. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tap is her favorite dance, and this was where she focused all her efforts. Some random Keisha facts. Her favorite color is blue. Her favorite food is pizza. It, all these were on the day that we talked anyway. Her one of her favorite movies is The Fast and the Furious, and her favorite family trip was to Portugal. She hopes to travel and see more of the world. Iceland was mentioned, and so was a West Coast road trip with Miss Alexa Church. Alexa, where are you? There you are. At Cochrane High, um, I know Keisha's family is here today, and I know their hearts are bursting with pride, as all your families are. At Cochrane High, Keisha had a great time playing Ultimate Frisbee for Miss Cunningham, but she is also a top academic student who will be attending U of C in the fall to study neurosciences and continue on to medicine. She wants to continue her path of helping people and making a difference in this world. Keisha has been a member of senior leadership for three years, and that is how I really got to know her. After COVID protocols ended this year, we were allowed to start doing stuff again at school. In leadership, we dove in headfirst to try and jam as many things as we could in the last four months of the year, especially for our grade 12s. Two of those events were our Right to Play Dodgeball Tournament and our Pep Rally. Keisha was one of the key organizers in both projects projects, and like most of our grade 12s, she stepped up and made these events come to life. After two very difficult years of COVID, we could not have asked for a better ending to your four years at Cochrane High. Our final event of the year, our pep rally, was a huge success, and we feel it was a great way to say farewell to our grade 12s. And of course, the most important thing is, you won the pep rally. <laughs> I'm almost done, I promise. The funny thing about being a teacher is that we have our own families and our own children. But our students at school are also our kids. The time we get to spend with you is our privilege, especially when it is outside of the classroom. I have gotten to spend many of these moments with Keisha, and I am extremely grateful for this, to have really gotten to know her and to see who she is. And who she is, she's a cobra. Hardworking, kind, considerate, 
smart, supportive, generous, funny, and beautiful inside and out. She makes a teacher's job very easy. I will miss her immensely, as I will all of you, but I cannot wait to see the trail that you blaze. Thank you for letting me introduce you today, Keisha. It is my honor. You make me proud in every way, and you make my heart full. Graduates of Cochrane High School, it gives me great pleasure to introduce your valedictorian of 2022, Ms. Keisha Bassey. Good morning, parents, teachers, staff, family, friends, and most importantly, my fellow graduates. It's an honor to be up here before you today and to have the opportunity to deliver to you some parting words and to reflect on our journey together these past four years. While I'm definitely not the wisest or most experienced individual in this room, I will try to do my best to impart some inspirational words upon you all. It's crazy to think that just four years ago, we were graduating grade eight and preparing to start high school. In just a matter of, sh in just a matter of four short years, we went from scared and nervous grade nines, cluelessly trying to navigate our ways through this school that felt gigantic, and most importantly, trying to stay out of the paths of the towering grade 12s, to the young adults and future leaders who sit in the very seats we've been waiting four years to sit in. Today is our day, our moment. So take a second to appreciate everything you've accomplished and achieved to be here today because it hasn't been an easy past four years. Throughout time, human beings have often looked up at the star-studded night sky whenever we have felt lost. We seek guidance, whether literal or symbolic, from the arrangement of stars and constellations in the night sky, searching for a path written in the stars. Over the past few years, I'm certain that many of us in this very room have felt lost, experienced uncertainty regarding our futures, or even lacked some semblance of normalcy. These past few years of high school that we've had together were not like anything our wildest dreams could have ever imagined. We entered high school hoping for four years of sporting events and pep rallies, performing art shows and band concerts, and especially the beloved annual school-wide events such as the dodgeball tournament and bunny tag. Instead, we got an unconventional and unpredictable four years at Cochrane High, to say the least. While we may not have experienced everything we had envisioned, we did learn many important things about ourselves and gained many valuable lessons, like how to create our own parking spots in the parking lot. <laughs> Acting as our bearings in the night sky, the three C's, character, commitment, and community, help to guide us to the very seats we are in today. It was our formidable character that we have developed over the years, which allowed us to persevere through these challenging times and come out stronger and unbowed. The depth and dedication of the commitments we made to others, our academics, athletics, passions, and even to ourselves, allowed us to have something to hold on to when nothing was certain and give us a purpose. Lastly, and most importantly, it's a testament to the strength and resolve of our community that we were able to navigate through the many obstacles in our path. Our teachers, staff, parents, and fellow classmates alike supported us on our best and worst days these past four years. It's been amazing to see this past year all the incredible things we've achieved despite the many obstacles in our path. Several of our sports teams made it to provincials, our band and performing art programs had their first live shows since grade 10. Our speech and debate club won their competition this year. Our leadership program organized many terrific events for the school, and our clubs came back in full force. As a class, we truly demonstrated that it is during our most darkest of times that our best qualities, our strong character, dedication to our commitments, and deep ties to our community that shine the brightest. 
As we all embark on our respective journeys, these three pillars of Cochrane High that have been fostered within us since day one of grade nine can be carried forth in everything that we do. We can continue to display the strong character in which we have developed, consisting of kindness, integrity, resilience, and determination to make us memorable in the eyes of others. The impressive dedication that we have had to our high school commitments can be transferred to our post-secondary years, careers, and dreams to help us achieve the level of excellence we are all capable of. Finally, we can ensure that we become involved in our future communities to strengthen them and pay for the support we have received from this very own community. In addition to embodying the three C's, don't forget to believe in yourself as you forge your own path. If you don't believe in yourself, why should anyone else? From this point on, you will become your biggest advocate, but also your biggest doubter. So whenever the uncertainty starts to creep in, remember to ask yourself the question, why not me? As we graduate, remember to cherish the growth you have undergone as an individual, the lessons and values you have learned, and the relationships you've formed over the past four years. Don't be afraid to try new things or to take chances. Life is short, and as we have learned over these last few years, the future is unpredictable. So seize every opportunity you are given because you truly never know when you'll get another. Remember that life is truly a journey. Don't become fixated on the destination because you'll miss out on the best and most wonderful part, the adventure, as that is where you learn the most important things about life and yourself. Lastly, remember that you can never truly become lost. The stars will always guide your way. To the class of 2022, thank you for your past four years, and for your next four, go on to do great things. As Gabrielle Gifford said, be bold, be courageous, be your best. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Keisha. Uh, awesome, inspiring words, and it's been a privilege to get to work with you for the last four years and for the last little bit with the grad committee. Thank you so much. Now it's time for the moment that you've all been waiting for. Before we do this moment, uh, something that I always like to remind the theater students before they go on stage is to be in the moment. And so first and foremost, parents, good job. <laughs> you did it. You made it here and you got your student through. So please take a breath. Enjoy this moment. Teachers, you helped, you guided, you've become mentors even when you weren't ready to be mentors and you did it. Take a deep breath. You're here. Grads, it was crazy. <laughs> but you did it. You're here. Enjoy this moment. Take a deep breath. You did it. This is going to be it for me today. But before we get to your moment, I want to recognize the legacy that you guys have left at Cochrane High School. You've improved our culture. You've enhanced our brand. You're a group of provincial champions academic all-stars, performing arts award winners, intramural dodgeball champions, <laughs> spirit day winners, and most importantly, now Cochrane High graduates. So thank you, grad class of 2022, for making these last four years, and especially these last six months, the most enjoyable of my career. Thank you very much. Okay, before I call people up, there's a couple of house rules that I have to go through. Uh, 
mostly just for the Rue family, but the rest of you should know these two. Um, okay, parents, you're gonna get excited. You're gonna wanna come up and take pictures, I know. So here's what we've done. On either side, you're gonna see a black line and a black X. You are not allowed to cross the line. Stay behind the line. Uh, if you want to come up to the line and take pictures, you're more than welcome to. We just ask that you watch out because the grads might be coming back to their seats through the aisles that are on the outside of them as well. Okay? There will also be opportunities for you to take pictures with your grads after. And so we just don't want this moment to be chaotic. Okay? Miss Rue? Okay. All right. Please uh, join me in welcoming up to the stage to hand out the diplomas. Mr. Chalmers, Ms. Lyons, Mr. Hooper, and announcing the students, Ms. Haxton and Ms. Boguski. Colby Adjuman. <laughs> Misha Ahmed. Harris Aitken. <laughs> Sydney Alcock. Jaden Andrews. <laughs> Marissa Armstrong. Michaela Arseno. <laughs> J. 
Jordan Ashcroft. Cole Atkinson. <laughs> Emily Balkin. Janelle Balzer. <laughs> Bryn Barrett. Keisha Bassey. <laughs> Jed Beach. Killian Beaupre. <laughs> Raymond Belanger. Brooklyn Bugin. <laughs> Kynan Bugin. Evan Bourbonnet. <laughs> Wyatt Brown.
Charlie Burns. Bryce Burton. Cody Burton. <laughs> Sammy. Carlson. <laughs> Bryn Chi. Matt Chambers. Lauren Champagne. Jackie Chen. <laughs> Jaden Chong. Alexa Church. <laughs> Carter Church. Sean Clazy. Lucas, 
Michael Clulo. Diego Coelho. Bailey Collins. Zach Colonna. <laughs> Carter Comtois. Joseph Curtis. <laughs> ben Dallison. Drayden Dancero. <laughs> Ethan DeCorsi. Keith Dostler. <laughs> River Dow. Matthew Gervais Legault. <laughs> Jordan Dvorak. Braden Eichinger. <laughs> Brian Hall. 
Malcolm Evans. Evan Fizer. <laughs> Owen Finlater. Erica Fisher. Kira, Kira Foley. <laughs> Rachel Fraser. Rowan Gazdewich. <laughs> Denea Godlin. Caitlin Gorley. Ella Graham. <laughs> Ava Green. Daniel Guosan.
Lucas Hanisek. Ali Hardock. Sarah Harris. Carter Henry. <laughs> Caitlin Henry. Liam Hepner. Jack Hiltz. Denver Holt. <laughs> Ryan Hosang Grant. Logan Hoskin. <laughs> Callum Houston. Logan Howard. Kaylor yeah. yeah. Hauk. Alana Gia. <laughs> Ellie. 
Evan Jode. Isabella Anson Holst. Taylor Carto. Harris Catcher. Aaron Kamenka. Sarah Kerr. Kaylee Keown. <laughs> Taylor Kindleman. Bria Kingshot. Andrew Corver. Madison Krenzel. <laughs> Quinn Kuzik. Jason Kwok.
Shane Laflamme. Evan Larson. Matthew Lee. <laughs> Sydney Lemon. Anna Leonard. Miller Lewis. Maddie Lyons. <laughs> Boston McDonald. Lexi Mason. <laughs> Nicholas McKee. Juliana McPike. Jeremy Meyer. Robert Meyer.
Connor Miller. Gemma Murray Gerlach. <laughs> Nicole Novak. Jill Ogilvy. <laughs> Joshua Opland. Aaron Olet. <laughs> Riley Payment. Finley Polymeric. Brooke Paradoski. Jacob Patterson. <laughs> Floriana Pepper. Beck Phillips. <laughs> Ethan Picard.
Karen Powell. Emma Price. Alden Pruden. Alva Punch. <laughs> Sam Ricard. Connor Rogvoldson. <laughs> Hayden Rosebra. Jackson Rothwell. <laughs> Kyra Rothwell. Sydney Rue. <laughs> Alexis Russell. Jess Sanborn. <laughs> Jenna Sand. Alexis Sanderman. <laughs> 
Sahib Sangera. Georgia Sather. Max Sauter. Milan Shapoval. Bailey Schellenberg. Jackson Scott. Jacob Scott. Solomon Searle. Aubrey Shapkin. Will Shea. <laughs> Alec Shepard. Julia Sheeman. Evan Sim.
Jordan Singleton. Marcus Skarsgård. <laughs> Sam Smilski. Madison Smith. Maxwell Solano. Faith Selecki. <laughs> Aurelia Souverain. Nicole Souza. Morgan Spokey. Jonah Springer. <laughs> Eva Springetti.
Simone Tass. Aiden Thompson. <laughs> Keelan Thorogood. Eloise Thorson. <laughs> Maddie Tolan. Chris Tremblay. Cassandra Trenke. Jacob Tourjan. Nico Van Wow. Jenna Vergi. <laughs> Sawyer Visti. Morgan Ward.
Eden Weinert. Nolan Wiest. <laughs> Bryn White. Jacob White. <laughs> Shay White. Nathan Weens. <laughs> Hayden Wolf. Aiden Wood. <laughs> Trayton Woolrich. Charlotte Woke. <laughs> Evan Zacker.
Luke Zimmerman. I was going to ask for another round of applause for the grad class, but I think that was well deserved. Congratulations, all of you. You've done it. Okay. I promise I'm going to get you out of here, but there's a couple more things I just need to take care of. So first and foremost, I just want to have, uh, there's a couple thank yous that I want to make out uh, to all the people who have made this day possible. First, I want to thank Morgan and Spray Lake staff and family for giving us this wonderful space. I'm not sure where Morgan is, but yes, round of applause for Morgan and Spray Lake's family. I'd like to give a thanks to James at Starlight who helped us with all the audio and the Cochrane High tech crew and Mr. Cooper for all their work streaming this event today. I'd like to thank the CHS staff and, uh, sorry, staff and admin for all the hard work that they've done helping us put this event together as well. And a very, uh, and there's a couple more, but a very important thank you to uh, our grad committee for all their hard work and dedication in this day that they've put in. Uh, a big thank you to it. This day would not be possible without the hard work of our amazing parent committee and all the work they've done, including making these gift bags for all of you grads. So big shout out to them as well. Uh, and last but not least, I just want to thank everyone who's here today to help us celebrate uh, this wonderful event and these amazing, amazing humans. Uh, so thank you so much for being here with us today. Okay. Just a favor, if you don't mind. At the end of this event, if you could help us by folding your chair and stacking your row, or if there is a group of parents who could help us with folding the chair and stacking the row, because all of this needs to go for the fun that's gonna happen tonight. Uh, and we have to put all the chairs away, so that would be much appreciated if you can do that for us. All right, although I cannot say that this is your last day of school and that you're free to go and that you can just disappear off the face of the earth now, I can say that this is the last time that this next person will be coming to the stage to do the hat toss. And so, if you can please all help me with welcoming to the stage, Mr. McNabb to do the hat toss. Thank you, thank you. Woo! Um, yeah, first of all, I would just like to uh, say um, it's been a pleasure being at Cochrane High for all these years. Uh, I know today's not about me, but the uh, fact that I've got to spend the last four years with these individuals, and I've got to say this is the best-looking group I've ever seen. i got to be honest with you. They say I say that every year, and I do, but this is truly the best-looking group because it's the last one. I just want to uh, say uh, which word becomes shorter when you add two letters. Short, well, Raymond, that's outstanding. So I'm gonna make this really short. I know Mr. Knitter's on the program, he's supposed to be up here with me right now. 
He's been following me around for six years, so he might as well be here. It seems fitting that he's here with me. Um, I always say I'm the most popular speaker because, of course, I'm the last one, so that's all good. Uh, Miss Lyons made me this hat toss guy because uh, I think I messed up every other job that we've done. You know, I couldn't say Smith or Jones, or uh, I just messed up the names. Or, but I did look it up today to see what the official name was for a hat toss guy. Can't find it. Just. <laughs> It just is, so I, I'm going to pass the torch off to uh, Mr. Nitter to be, and challenge him to be a great hat toss guy next year. Um, I just will, just like to say, I don't, I don't know where you're all heading in life. Your parents don't. I don't know where I'm going, but I do know where you're from. You're from Cochrane High School, and once a Cobra, always a Cobra, and I truly believe that. So be proud of where you came from, and be very, and I'm very excited to read about you, see about you all over the world and having some uh, great times. Uh, before we toss the hats, as Robbie McNabb says, on grad weekend, be safe, be smart, and remember it's not a stupid contest. There's never a winner in a stupid contest, I gotta be honest with you. Anyways, as we go to toss the cap, there's a method, it's just a, a light flick. Some of you wanna hit the ceilings. I saw a couple with spikes on them. That's a little dangerous, so be careful there. Um, make sure you toss responsibly. It is grad weekend, and you know, the uh, Cochrane men want you to toss responsibly. So I'm going to say, Cobra's on two, one, two. Just wait, just wait. I will have to stand first, so up you come. And I'm gonna do this with you because it's the last time I get to do this myself. So Cobra's on two, you yell Cobra's, and then we release the cap into the air. As the culminating activity, it's your transition from a high school student to a high school graduate. Congratulations. All right, here we go. Cobra's on two, one, two, Cobra's! All right, have fun. Okay, grads, I need you to look to find Mr. Henderson and Ms. Puelko. Look to find Mr. Henderson or Ms. Puelko. You can do it. I believe in you. Someone's hat's over here. I also have a tassel. Okay, look for Mr. Henderson, Ms. Puelko. We can play the music and follow them single file line out. Open, you take that jump, you don't feel the fall. Open, the water rises, you build a wall. Open, the crowd screams out. Screaming your name Hope if everybody runs You choose to stay Hope that you fall in love And it hurts so bad Till my 
moment comes, I'll say I, I did it all. I, I did it all. I hoped every second that this world could give. I saw so many places, the things that I did. There was every broken bone. I swear I lived. Where?